Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and after a couple of weeks off, we're getting the new year going with another brand new series. I recently found a big stack of my Pokemon cards from when I was a kid. As I never actually played the game, when they got banned in my school, which they did, I stopped getting new cards. So as a result, the bulk of my cards are Gen 1 Pokemon, because I'm old. There are like 10 Gen 2 cards, including two unknown, because I had great sense. But other than that, they're all Gen 1. I think I counted 212 of them, and I don't really want to count again. So, my idea was to play through Pokemon Leaf Green with a random team redrawn for every major battle, so gyms and rival battles basically. I'll put in all of the cards I have of available Pokemon at the time of the battle, and then draw the same number of team members as our opponent has. We'll match levels with them and take them on in a set battle with no items held or otherwise. This challenge will get harder and harder as the game goes on, because I don't have a lot of fully evolved Pokemon in this stack of cards. There are enough to make this interesting, but the majority of them are unevolved Pokemon. So the further we make it, the harder the matches are going to be. What you're watching right now is the cards that will be shuffled to pick our team for the first rival battle with Gary, or Blue, or whatever you want to call him, and for our first gym battle with Brock. The only difference between the two will be the Butterfree available against Brock. Gary's two team members are both level 9, so there's no way we could get a Butterfree before facing him. The only Pokemon that are available in the game that I didn't have were Metapod, Kakuna, and Beedrill. I have no idea how I don't have Metapod or Kakuna, that just seems weird. Before I draw any of my teams though, we need to decide what starter our rival will be using throughout the game. I have a few of each, so it could be anyone, and it looks like it'll be Bulbasaur. That could actually be a tough draw because we don't have many fire types in this stack. But there are a lot of grass and water types. Anyway, we don't need to draw our team for this first battle, with Gary using Bulbasaur, we have to take Swirl. I'm sure you've all done this kind of battle a bunch of times and know the strategy. Spam your attack and hope to get lucky. We beat our rival pretty easily, so let's check out what team we're going to be using for our rival battle with Gary on Route 22. We're going to be leveling two Pokemon up to level 9 to match our rival's team, and it looks like we'll be using Pikachu and... Squirtle. Not too bad, feels like a pretty classic early game team. This shouldn't be too hard, but like I said, this challenge is going to ramp up in difficulty the further we go. The way things should be. Anyway, let's get into it. Gary leads off with his level 9 Pidgey, and we start out with Pikachu. The normal flying type knows Tackle, Sand Attack, and Gust, but with everyone's favourite mascot knowing Thundershock, Pidgey was never going to win this. Two hits take down the early bird, and our rival sends in his starter, Bulbasaur. As our battle style is on set, we have to waste a turn sending in Squirtle. This isn't a good matchup for us, but I want to use my whole team in every battle, so let's give it a try. The Kanto Grass starter sort of got the short straw as far as early movesets go. At this point, Charmander knows Ember and Squirtle knows Bubble, but Bulbasaur only gets Leech Seed. It's a great move, but it doesn't really give the Seed Pokemon any advantage against water types like Squirtle. As a result, this played out a lot like the first battle. It's mostly just a whole lot of tackling, growling, and tail whipping. The final move is a speed tie coin flip as Bulbasaur outspeeds Squirtle to take him down. That leaves us with just Pikachu, and even though electric type moves aren't very effective, it's more than enough. The first Thundershock paralyzes Bulbasaur, and from there it's just a matter of time. The Grass Starter eventually falls, and we've taken down Gary. Brock has a team of two, so for our first gym battle we have to draw another team. It looks like we'll be using Mankey at level 12, and at level 14 we'll have Spearow. I'm going to try to match the gym leader's levels with the order I draw for the most part. Sometimes an evolution won't allow that, and other times I'll straight up forget. More often than not though, that's the goal. Oh yeah, also this happened. If you watched the last random episode challenge, you know how ridiculous this is, because I found this shiny Rattata not only in the same game, but in the same patch of grass on Route 22. Hopefully we get a chance to use her at some point during this challenge. Anyway, this is what our team looks like before taking on the game's first gym leader. We've got another lucky draw for this one by getting Mankey, so I'm feeling pretty good. The Pewter City gym leader starts off the battle with his level 12 Geodude, and we go with Spearow. This is our attempt to use our whole team, but Geodude's sky high defense is just too much for Spearow. This time around, we switch out before losing our less useful team member and bring in Mankey. If you've ever wanted to see an angry monkey who's trained in martial arts attack a rock with arms but no legs, then this is the place for you. One karate chop is more than enough to wipe out Geodude, so Brock is forced to send in his level 14 Onyx. Even though we're a level below the rock snake, low kick all but guarantees our victory. 
The move's power is calculated by the target's weight, with Pokemon weighing 200 kilos or more facing a 120 base power move. So with Onyx standing at 28 feet 10 inches tall and weighing in at 463 pounds, he's pretty screwed. One low kick almost one shots Onyx, and the second one is probably overkill. We've beaten Brock and earned our first gym badge. And that's going to do it for the first part of this series. Leave a like and a comment if this is something you'd like to see more of, because if nobody is interested, then there's not much point in me continuing to make it. i would pretty much been recording, writing, and editing without stopping through October, November, and December to get out all of the content I did, so it was really nice to have some time off. I'm currently in the process of doing a bide-only run in Platinum and a random episode challenge, but both of those series take quite a lot of time, so I want to start something a little easier. Most people turn off the video once the outro starts, so if you stay this long, then your reward is learning what the next challenge is. It may be a while before you see it, because it's really difficult to win battles when Bide is your only way of attacking, so that's probably going to take a while. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.